Hello, dear respected students. Uh, today we are continuing series of uh, therapy lectures, and uh, today is our goal: examine and palpate the organs of healthy patient. As uh, you know from previous lecture, whole examination of organs uh, has sequences. First, of course, we should inspect and then go to palpate organ and then percussion and next sequence is auscultation of organs. Let's start from inspection of thyroid gland. Inspection of thyroid gland we provide uh, to detect the presence of a goiter, nature of the lesion, diffuse goiter or nodular goiter, localization of nodes, mobility of gland when swallowing. Examination of patient uh, face is very important in uh, uh, thyroid gland disorders. For example, in the thyroid state will be calm facial expression. With hypothyroidism will be uh, facial uh, expression change into the anemic and puffy. With thyrotoxicosis or uh, hyperthyroidism, uh, patient, uh, patient's uh, facial expression will be restless, thin with wide eyes and frightened uh, look. Uh, here on first picture you see facial expression of uh, typical specific uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, next page, uh, next uh, picture shows you facial expression of patient with hyperthyroidism. There are two methods of palpation. Uh, you can stay uh, during palpation. You can stay uh, behind the patient, or you can uh, be under the patient. It's uh, during palpation. It's necessary to assess size of gland, determine the consistency. It may be soft consistency or elastic consistency or hard. Uh, you should detect the mobility, soreness or painfulness of gland, presence of nodes or diffuse enlargement, and also assess whether it is shift when swallowing. Uh, according to international classification of goiter, uh, there are three stages, uh, three degrees uh, of enlargement, uh, zero degree, no goiter, first degree, size is larger than the distal phalanx of the thumb of the examined person, the goiter is palpable but not visible. In second degree, goiter is palpable and visible to eye. Next will be examination of peripheral lymph nodes. You know, lymph nodes are part of the lymphatic system through which drainage of certain anatomical zones is carried out. Lymph nodes perform barrier and immune functions. The body has from 600 to 700 lymph nodes and the largest number of them, them are in the mesentery, in the root of lung, in the armpit. Weight of lymph nodes is from 500 gram to 1 kilogram and it's about corresponds to about 1% of body weight. Uh, the following groups of peripheral lymph nodes available for palpation and uh, let's start from occipital lymph nodes located on the uh, tubercles of the occipital bone, collect lymph from the scalp uh, and back of the neck. Uh, here is uh, examples of palpation of occipital lymph nodes. You uh, should palpate by a uh, pad of your fingers. Next is mastoid lymph nodes located behind the ears uh, in the mastoid process and uh, uh, here I demonstrate you how correctly palpate the mastoid lymph nodes. Uh, also, you should uh, also you should palpate the parotid lymph nodes which is located in front of the ear on the parotid salivary gland. Lymph is uh, collected from the middle ear. Uh, from the skin surrounding the ear and auricles in the external auditory canal. Uh, also, on the third uh, page, you see submandibular, how palpate the correctly submandibular lymph nodes located under the branches of the lower jaw, collect lymph from the skin of face and gingival mucos, mucosa. The mm, submental on the second page page submental usually one on e, uh, each side collect lymph from the skin of the lower uh, lip gingival mucosa and area of lower 
incisors. Uh, you should know that normally uh, mastoid lymph nodes, occipital uh, and submental lymph nodes, they are not palpable. Only submandibular lymph nodes may be palpable. Next group uh, groups lymph nodes are anterior cervical and posterior cervical. Anterior cervical located in uh, are in front of the sternocleidomastoideus muscle, and posterior located uh, along the posterior edge of this edge of these muscles. Next groups are subclavicular and subclavian, Supra, sorry, supraclavicular and uh, infraclavicular or uh, subclavian lymph nodes. Located supraclavicular lymph nodes located in the region of sub, uh, supraclavicular fossas and uh, subclavian located in intraclavicular area. You are uh, here. I also demonstrate you how correctly palpate this kind of lymph nodes. Next is axillary lymph nodes located in the axillary fossa. Lymph is collected from the skin of upper extremities with the exception of third, fourth and uh, fifth fingers and the uh, inner surface of ha uh, hand. Uh, here I also demonstrating you how correctly palpate this axillary lymph nodes. Uh, by one hand you should fix the shoulder uh, inspected uh, um, side and by another hand you go uh, direct, uh, directly to the armpit and take, uh, take lymph nodes pressed to the chest and palpate by your pencil finger. To prevent the uh, slipping, um, uh, you should take, uh, for example, napkin or cloth of uh, cloth of patient. Ulna uh, or cubital lymph nodes located in the sulcus bicipitalis and collect uh, lymph from the skin of third, fourth, fifth fingers and the inner surface of hand. And here I am also demonstrating how correctly take. Uh, these lymph nodes and palpate. Inguinal and popliteal lymph nodes. Inguinal lymph nodes located along the inguinal ligament uh, and popliteal located in the popliteal fossa. Uh, and also here is methods of palpation. When palpating the lymph nodes, pay attention about the following parameters. You should give characteristics to palpated lymph nodes. First, you should assess the size of lymph nodes. Normally, diameter of lymph nodes does not exceed 0.5 cm. That's uh, no more than size of a pea. Quantity, consistency of lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are elastic, soft or dense. Mobility, normally the nodes are mobile. Attitude to the skin, subcutaneous fatty tissue and to each other, normally not soldered with each other, not soldered with skin and subcutaneous tissue. Sensitivity uh, of lymph nodes or uh, maybe soreness uh, lymph nodes. Uh, sometimes uh, lymph nodes may be painful, uh, sometimes uh, uh, may be um, sensitive to palpation. Vascular system. Examination of vascular system started from examination of uh, arteries and you should uh, learn in third course level, you should learn which point of uh, arteries, which point of um, uh, arteries palpable and closer to the um, to the um, in inspected areas closer to the inspected areas they are temporal artery and also carotid artery brachial artery ulnar radial arteries and also popliteal artery and femoral artery arterium dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial artery let's uh, take, uh, take one by one palpation of uh, um, uh, pulse started from uh, detection of pulse in uh, in radial artery and uh, if uh, both um, uh, you should determine on both radial arteries and identify the differences uh, in feeling and size if uh, you has um, uh, your patient has different pulse on each radial, uh, radial artery it uh, uh, called as a pulses 
pulses difference. For example, on the left radial artery, a uh, decrease in feeling and pulse size is noticeable. Also, you should palpate the aortic arch as in the jugular fossa, palpable when the hand head is uh, tilted forward, normally not palpable on the first picture. Next, carotid artery between the larynx and the inner edge of the sternocleidomastoideal mastoideal muscle all the way up to the angle of the mandible you see on the uh, palpation of carotid arteries, first aortic arch palpable and palpation of common carotid arteries. Also second, play, uh, second picture, also first is how you palpate aortic uh, arch of aorta and common carotid arteries palpation methods. Temporal artery palpable in the temporal region you see on the first picture palpation of temporal artery by two fingers. Subclavian artery in the subclavicular fossa and in the Morinheim fossa under the clavicle and uh, you see points, there are points of palpation of subclavian artery and how correctly palpate these subclavian arteries. Axillary artery pressed against the head of the shoulder in two position with the arm lowered or horizontal rise. Palpable in almost 100% of cases, you see axillary artery position in relaxed position and you see axillary artery palpation. Brachial artery along the sulcus bicipitalis medialis and in the elbow bend. You can uh, here I uh, am representing you palpation of the brachial artery. How palpate the correct? During palpation, you should press the artery uh, to the bone, and uh, um, you should um, also move the um, muscle. You also see palpation of the brachial artery. Radial artery uh, in the front of surface of forearm outward from the flexor tension proximal to the wrist joint is pressed against the radi radius. Here, uh, here I am um, also representing you how correctly palpate the radial arteries. Ulnar artery is on the anterior palmar side of the forearm medially of the flexor tension proximal to the wrist joint. Palpable are uh, worse than the radial arteries. Here also techniques examination and palpation of ulnar arteries. Abdominal aorta is slightly to the left of the linea alba from the xiphoid process to the navel and bifurcation of the aorta with a flabby abdominal wall and in skinny patient can be palpable almost at the level of navel just below the fourth lumbar vertebra. You see here palpation of the abdominal aorta and uh, bifurcation of aorta techniques. External iliac artery and the initial segment of the femoral artery above the below the pupil ligament um, respectively between the internal and middle third palpable in almost all people. You see palpation of common iliac arteries position. Next popliteal artery in popliteal fossa you see how palpate the popliteal artery you, sh uh, you should feel the pulsation of popliteal artery. Posterior tibial artery below and slightly posterior to the inner ankle and artery of the dorsum of the foot. Here you see real location of uh, posterior tibial and dorsal foot artery. Pulse study started from uh, the palpation of two hands and uh, you should get pulse properties in your radial artery. Symmetry, first you should assess symmetry, uh, symmetricity, uh, rhythm, frequency, tension, feeling, size and form or shape of pulse. Rhythm, assessed by the equality of the interval between the pulse waves. 
uh, sometimes maybe arrhythmias. Uh, arrhythmia, there are types of arrhythmias, maybe respiratory arrhythmia, when um, increased frequency on inhalation, decrease on exhalation phase, or sometimes maybe loss of pulse waves or the appearance of weak primitive wave against the background of the correct rhythm, for example, it uh, called as a pulses intermittent, or irregular rhythm with waves uh, of different size, for example, in atrial fibrillation or in any kinds of extracystal canicule. Frequency of pulse. Now you should uh, count the correct rhythm for 30 seconds and multiply by 2. Or uh, when your patient has arrhythmic pulse, of course, you should uh, count uh, during minute. Um, sometimes, uh, um, at the same time, listen to the heart. Uh, if not every contraction of the heart is accompanied by a pulse wave, they speak of a deficiency of pulse. Pulse deficiency is determined with the assistant. One listen and count heart circle for a minute, the second for the same minute simultaneously count pulse wave. Differences is a pulse deficit uh, or deficiency of pulse. For example, heart rate is 90 per minute, pulse is 70 per minute. Uh, deficiency uh, is 20. Uh, it may occur in congestive heart failure, it uh, may uh, uh, occur in atrial fibrillation uh, moment. Next, are you assessing tension? force of compression of the artery necessary for uh, disappearance of the pulse depends on minimum blood pressure, uh, the rigidity of vessel wall, the surroundings of tissue vessel. Next, you are assessing feeling of pulse, filling the artery with blood during the passage of for the first pulse wave after weakening the finger that squeezes the artery. The more elastic the artery, the more it can expand. And here is uh, here I am representing you determination of tension and feeling of pulse. How you should provide the doctor's index finger uh, is at the wrist joint. All three fingers feel the pulse wave. With the fourth finger, the doctor squeezes the radial artery with such force that the pulse is not filled by the second and third fingers. This force is a measure of the pulse tension. Next is doctor release the fourth finger and uh, take out the um, fourth finger and second, third fingers feel a feeling of pulse. Pulse size, amount by which the palpating fingers rise by the pulse wave. Depending on the tension and feeling of the pulse, uh, directly proportional to systolic volume, uh, to systolic volume of heart. Pulse shape, rate of rise and uh, fall of the pulse wave. Uh, according to pulse shape, maybe normal, uh, rapid pulse or decrotic pulse or slow pulse. Next is blood pressure measurement methods. Measuring of blood pressure, you know, it's very important. And to this measure, uh, of course, uh, we use BP cuff. Uh, uh, which conditions we need to measure the blood pressure? First, of course, uh, the use of coffee and strong tea for one hour before the study is excluded, before measuring is, should be excluded. It's recommended not to smoke for uh, 30 minutes before measuring the blood BP. Include of uh, sympathomimetics, including nasal and eye drops. A BP is measured at rest after 5 minutes of rest. Uh, if the Procedure for measuring blood pressure was preceded by a significant physical or emotional stress. Rest period should be extended till 30 minutes. Uh, how you measure blood pressure measurement techniques? Uh, you should uh, pump air into the cuff to a pressure level of 20 mm Hg exceeding the systolic uh, uh, blood pressure. Uh, BP is uh, measured with an accuracy of 2 mm Hg, Re reduce the pressure in the cuff at a rate of amount 2 uh, mm Hg per second. Pressure level at which first tone appear correspond to systolic blood pressure, 
presence of uh, uh, the procedure whether at which the tone disappear we recognize as diastolic BP. It's also available to measure blo uh, blood pressure on the lungs, especially in patients under 30 years. Of course, to measure, we uh, use large BP cuff. And uh, you should put stethoscope uh, in the popliteal fossa. Next, study of venous system. After studying of arteries, you should continue study the venous system. Of course, you should pay attention about the enlargement of veins. Normal, pay, uh, normal veins, uh, neck veins, for example, uh, should be not enlarged and non pulsate. We have only pulsation of arteries, no veins. If you have pulsation of veins, it means positive venous pulse. It may occur uh, due to increasing of pressure in right atrium or uh, may occur uh, due to during um, congestive heart failure, severe congestive heart failure, which result in increasing pressure in the right atrium. Sometimes you can detect the varicose vein of low extremities, vein enlargement. Examination and palpation of chest. Uh, you should start from the general inspection. Uh, so during, during general inspection examination, uh, you, you could see forced position of patient. Uh, for example, position of patient on a sore side, maybe due to pleurisy, due to, uh, pleuritis or lung abscesses, or to near position. Uh, may uh, may uh, patient may have uh, do, during bronchial asthma attack. Uh, examination of respiratory system started from examination of upper airways, uh, examination of nose and paranasal sinuses. It's necessary to ask the patient about difficulty of nasal breathing uh, or features of sense of smell. Inspect and palpate the nose, note the shape, symmetry and tenderness. Next. Uh, for an estimation of nasal breathing, patient uh, is asked to displace right ally in his eye to, uh, nasi to nasal septum with his fingers and to breathe by way of left nares. And uh, you should inspect both sides. Uh, also, you should press the tip to nose uh, to of the nose to expand nostrils. This way allows examine the vestibule of nose. Also, uh, it should be uh, uh, your patient. Uh, your patient uh, uh, sinuses should uh, uh, should be inspected. Uh, you should palpate the um, frontal sinus and maxillary sinus. Also, continue examination of larynx. Estimate loudness and uh, timbre of the voice. Palpate the larynx. Then you continue to inspection of chest, uh, estimated chest uh, shape, symmetry of chest, participation of the chest in the act of breathing, breathing parameters, and chest excursion. Let's discuss about chest examination. Detection of uh, shape of chest, uh, how you determine of shape of chest. First, ratio of the anterior posterior to the transfer size of the chest, severity of supra and subclavian fossas, Lewis corner, you should assess the Lewis corner, co uh, course of ribs or a slope of ribs um, and uh, uh, width of the intercostal space in the axillary region, value of epigastric angle and width of the intrascapular space. Here is how you detect the length, width, anterior, posterior size of chest. Next is determination of the severity of the supra and subclavian fossas. Determination of loose angle. Uh, you know, near the loose angle, we have second intercostal space. Next is uh, determination of direction of the ribs and the width of the intercostal space. Next, determination of epigastric angle. There are two uh, kinds of chest shapes, physiological and pathological. And you know physiological uh, chest uh, shape 
uh, we have three types normasthenic type hypersthenic type and asthenic type what does it mean normasthenic type uh, frustrum uh, shape anterior posterior size is less than lateral supraclavicular and intraclavicular fossas are slightly expressed Lewis angle is clearly visible, epigastric angle almost 90 degree, course of the ribs is moderately oblique, and height of the chest and height of abdomen are equal. equal. Next is hypersthenic shape, hypersthenic type, cylinder shape, the anterior posterior uh, dimension approaches the lateral, the supraclavicular and subclavian forces are smooth. Loose angle is expressed significantly, epigastric angle greater, uh, greater than 90 degree, course of the ribs is horizontal, intercostal spaces are reduced, and height of the chest is less than abdominal height. Asthenic type, uh, this elongated narrow shape, anterior posterior and lateral uh, dimensions are reduced, supraclavicular and subclavian forces are distinctly expressed, epigastric angle less than 90 degree, course or slope of the ribs is vertical, intercostal spaces are expanded, and height of the chest is more than abdomen's height. Uh, also, uh, um, your patient has uh, pathological forms of chest. For example, uh, uh, there are several kinds of pathological uh, uh, types, emphysematose or barrel shape, for example, meacue in uh, emphysa emphysema uh, or in um, bronchial asthma disorders, paralytic chest or rachitic chest or funeral chest uh, or uh, uh, forward chest uh, or kyphoscoli or kyphoscoliotic chest. Next is uh, you should det uh, determine the symmetry of the chest on the body uh, with the using of uh, uh, bone landmarks, uh, which landmark shoulders, clavicles, above and uh, supraclavicular forces, uh, spines and angle of shoulder uh, blades, uh, intrascapular spaces uh, should be same angle of uh, uh, ribs. Mm. And comparison of both halves of chest is carried out during examination and during breathing. But uh, also you should uh, assess the participation of chest in the act of breathing. It's maybe active participation and symmetrical. Normally it should be active and symmetrical. Uh, sometimes in any pathological process, uh, your uh, uh, one half of chest uh, during breathing may uh, lagging behind uh, and you should assess which half lagging behind. Так, here is how check the participation of chest uh, in breathing process. Chest, exam uh, uh, chest examination uh, also um, we do to detection the breathing parameters counting the frequency of breathing movement per minute, uh, detect the breathing rhythm this rhythm is correct or incorrect, detect the breathing depth, swallow, medium, deep, uh, detect uh, or shallow, sorry, shallow, medium or deep, uh, detect the type of breathing, chest, abdominal or mixed, and uh, also you should detect ratio of inhalation and exhalation. Respiratory chest excursion, difference between uh, the chest circumstances at the height of maximum inspiration and maximum expiration. Measurement, measurement with a centimeter tape when applied from behind at the angle of the shoulder blades in front along the fourth intercostal space. Expansion of the chest is determined at maximum inhalation and maximum uh, exhalation in centimeters. Normally, uh, total excursion is 6 to 8 centimeters. Here is uh, during uh, inspiration and expiratory phase, uh, our doctors measure expiratory excursion. Palpation of chest. Uh, we do, we provide to define the soreness, 
chest deformities or elasticity resistance of chest and vocal fremitus. Palpation uh, to determine the local chest pain uh, may uh, uh, palpate, uh, palpate it in supraclavicular region, clavicle, subclavian region, sternum, ribs, intercostal spaces, lateral section of chest, supra and infraclavicular regions. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, chest uh, parts may be painful. It may occur due to uh, several reasons. It may occur due to fracture of uh, chest bones or intercostal nerve damages or inflammatory changes in muscle or ligaments. Uh, chest elasticity. Elasticity. How we uh, check the chest elasticity or uh, um, chest resistance uh, determined by compression of the chest in the anterior posterior and lateral direction here see uh, chest uh, elasticity uh, in, in anterior posterior and lateral direction anterior posterior pressing and lateral direction pressing uh, also, palpation of chest, we need to detect the vocal fremitus. When a person speaks, the vocal cord create vibration vocal fremitus in the tracheobronchial tree and through the lungs and chest wall where they can be uh, felt tactile or vocal fremitus. This is usually assessed with the uh, healthcare provider placing on the flat of their palm on the chest wall and then ask patient to repeat a phrase containing low frequency uh, vowels such as blue balloon or toys for uh, tot. Uh, mostly we are um, asking patient to say 99 and uh, it's provided in supraclavicular, subclavian, axillary, uh, suprascapular, interscapular and subscapular areas. Here I demonstrate how provides this vocal fremitus. First of course uh, you should uh, uh, check vocal fremitus, symmetry of vocal fremitus on anterior part of chest. Uh, don't exceed uh, of course apex uh, of uh, lungs and then anterior part, lateral part and how you uh, put your hand to check the vocal fremitus in posterior part. Examination and palpation of heart area. Uh, uh, we uh, need to palpate the, and examine the heart region to identify uh, the changes in the chest in the region of heart to uh, detect the tremors if present uh, to detect the ripples and trembling. Palpation of heart uh, we provide to detect deformities of heart uh, or uh, to um, uh, inspect the apical impulse, heart impulses, vascular bundle and epigastric pulsation. What does it mean apical impulse? This is a blue of the apex of heart against the chest wall when the ventricles this is left ventricle of the heart contract. Epical impulse are uh, to uh, uh, inspect the epical impulse. You should place the base of palm on, of the right hand on the chest and the fingers in the intercostal space. With the tips of second and third finger, set uh, uh, this uh, pulsation part. And uh, here I demonstrate how I, uh, how I provide papical impulse um, palpation techniques. You should put your hypothenner on the fifth intercostal space and thenner you should put on the left side of uh, sternum and uh, feel the beating. And uh, if you find the beating on the fifth intercostal space, put your second and third, uh, third fingers and uh, you should uh, give characteristics, assess the localization, rhythm, character, width, height, power and displacement of apical impulse. Normal localization of apical impulse is a uh, fifth intercostal space 1 to 1.5 cm medially from the left midclavicular line. Rhythm equally of intercostal between the blues of the apical impulse. Uh, this rhythm normally should be rhythmic. Character uh, or sometimes apical impulse uh, may be 
uh, normally should be positive but sometimes uh, may be negative because of for example pericardial damaging with normal this is one one to two centimeters sometimes uh, maybe spilled with more than two centimeters uh, height uh, apical impulse amplitude of the chest may be according to height low or medium or tall next is power of apical impulse pressure of the apical impulse on the fingers uh, so normally it will be a medium power sometimes maybe high power for example due to uh, hypertrophies or uh, due to increasing heart rate also maybe high power of uh, apical impulse uh, an increase in the area of more than 3 cm is a site of the left ventricle dilation. It may occur during uh, myocarditis or may occur con uh, during congestive heart failure. Amplification or increase in amplitude uh, it's may be um, cause, caused by ventricular hypertrophy. Heart impulse. Also, we should recognize the heart impulse. It's different from epical impulse. Localized on fourth rib or fourth intercostal space outward from the left edge of the sternum uh, may develop due to hypertrophy and dilation of the right ventricle. Normally, there is no heart impulses. Heart impulse. Here I demonstrate how palpate the heart impulse on fourth intercostal space left side of sternum. Normally, there is no heart impulses. Vascular bundle. This is a pulsation of aorta or pulmonary trunk on second intercostal space on the right or left at the edge of the sternum. You know, uh, vascular uh, vascular uh, bundle uh, depends on the um, three vessels. First condition depends on three vessels. First is aorta, second is the pulmonary artery, and third is vena cava superior. And uh, in case of increasing, uh, uh, enlarging aorta or uh, pulmonary artery, may vascular may uh, in uh, vascular bundle area uh, may appear the pulsation. Here, how check the pulsation on the aortic region and, and vascular bundle also aortic region uh, on the pulmonary artery, second intercostal space, left side of sternum. Vascular bundle also second intercostal space. Next is epigastric pulsation. Cost of epigastric pulsation is right ventricular hypertrophy. Normally, there is no epigastric pulsation. Uh, under the, uh, detected under the xiphoid process, uh, clearly with a deep breath, pulsation of abdominal aorta may also give us epigastric pulsation um, or liver pulsation sometimes can give us epigastric pulsation also. Here is how we detect epigastric pulsation. Next is palpation of liver. Uh, it's very also important palpation of liver. We are going to the abdominal region and abdominal region. Uh, in the abdominal region, we should study the how palpate the liver, how palpate the spleen, how palpate uh, stomach and uh, uh, different parts of uh, large intestine. Let's start from palpation of liver. Uh, to palpation of liver, we use biomanual palpation. Mm, uh, palpation uh, or liver and spleen uh, there are two organs with exclusion organs all organs firstly we palpate and percut only two organs liver and spleen first we percut and then palpate position of doctor uh, should be on the right side of patient and uh, uh, patient position would be in supine uh, a supine uh, 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 muzzle relaxed, uh, knees bent position. Uh, then uh, we uh, palpate during normal palpation. Uh, normally, uh, liver is not palpable, only palpable edge of liver, and uh, uh, edge of the liver drops by 1 1.5 centimeters. It, uh, uh, it uh, uh, may occur during deep breathing. Uh, during a palpation, you should uh, give characteristics. You should uh, 
uh, assess the severity of hepatomegaly, shape uh, of edge of liver, it's maybe sharp or rounded edge, a uh, normally sharp edge of uh, liver, consistency soft or dense, normal of course soft elastic consistency. Uh, you also should assess the uh, um, presence of uh, 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 presence of the uh, univenous or tuberosity, uh, tenderness to palpation. Um, palpation or also you should assess the um, a smooth or a rough uh, edge of um, edge of uh, liver. Next is palpation of spleen. Uh, patient should lie on his right side. His head uh, is slightly uh, tilted forward to the chest. Uh, the left arm bent uh, at the elbow joint uh, lies on the front surface of chest. The right leg is extended and the left is bent at the knees and hip joint. Uh, and in this position we have maximal, um, uh, maximum uh, opportunities to check the uh, det uh, detect the palpation spleen. Normally spleen is not palpable, uh, not palpable uh, normally even if you palpate the edge of liver you get edge of liver or sorry uh, edge of spleen it means pathological condition it means splenomegaly next uh, uh, and also you should know uh, normal spleen is located in the abdominal area left hypochondric region uh, it uh, located between the 9th and 11th ribs uh, next, uh, you should uh, also know uh, areas of the abdomen. There are nine uh, regions of abdomen. Uh, you see uh, uh, hypoepigastric region, uh, umbilical region, and hypogastric region. Also, you should uh, uh, recognize the right and left hypochondric region, uh, right and left uh, flanks uh, uh, of abdomen and uh, right and uh, left iliac regions. Palpation of abdomen, most uh, informative physical method for examining the abdominal organs. There are two types of palpation, superficial, uh, approximate palpation of the abdomen and deep palpation, or we know or recognize deep palpation as uh, sliding palpation or myth methodical, deep methodical palpation. Uh, there are uh, several kinds of rules of palpation. Patient takes a position on his back with uh, outstretched leg, legs and arms along the body. Patient's head should lie low. Uh, patient should breathe deeply with his open mouth, mouth and uh, abdomen uh, breathing. The doctor should be located to the right side of patient and uh, doctor's hand should be warm. Uh, it, it's very important, these rules of palpation. Also, uh, here is a method, a method of superficial approximate palpation and sequence, uh, uh, sequences of uh, superficial palpation. Uh, all palpation this should start from the uh, left uh, inguinal region and uh, go to the right inguinal region, to the back side, and go to, to the um, uh, sorry uh, to the lateral part and go to the uh, right and uh, left hypochondric region and go. Uh, we after reaching the epigastric region, we go down, go to the umbilical region and hypogastric region. We palpate hypogastric region. Uh, during superficial pal palpation, you, you should uh, detect the soreness and tension of muscle. Uh, is there any bulging or not? Uh, also, should detect the um, uh, divergence of the rectum abdominis muscle. Here, uh, palpation is performed during lifting time the patient's head and rectus muscle tension belly. Uh, also, Palpation we use to detect the lower border of stomach. There are three types, uh, three methods of uh, detecting the lower border of stomach. Percussion method, auscultation method and splashing noise detection method. 
uh, first is a uh, percussion method we uh, uh, percut the um, lower border of stomach by uh, and detect by changing the sound percussion sound from timpani uh, to exact uh, to light timpani sound next auscultation method uh, you put stethoscope in the area of the uh, location of stomach epigastric area and uh, with the fingers of the right hand they apply quite percussion blues to the abdominal wall first near the stethoscope and then gradually moving away from it when percussed outside the zone of projection of the stomach the sound decreased sharply or disappeared next method is splash noise method patient is offered to drink a glass of water after that with the fingers of the right hand jackie blows are applied in the epigastric region gradually dropping down when the stomach walls are shaken a splashing noise occurs this is a uh, border of stomach and then uh, we continue palpation of the whole uh, abdominal region in abdominal region we palpate uh, all parts of um, large intestine small intestine are not uh, is not palpable only parts of large intestine palpation techniques there are four sequences first is of course always uh, it doesn't matter which organs you are palpating these uh, four moments you should keep first is placing the fingers on the right hand flat with slightly bent fingers on the area under study second moment shifting of the skin with the formation of skin fold next is immersion of the fingers into the abdominal cavity taking advantage of the relaxation of the abdominal muscles while inhaling immersion deep into the abdomen to the back wall um, it uh, must be done slowly without sudden movement and fourth moment is uh, percussion of uh, organ itself is sliding hand movements you see and uh, using these techniques uh, we can palpate uh, uh, the whole parts of uh, large intestine and here are sequences first of course we palpate the sigmoid colon then go to the cecum and then go to the descending part and go to the ascending part and transverse part during palpation we should detect the shape size consistency mobility soreness of the intestine i finished my lecture thank you for your attention dear students